take out its head midsole bud here. A little bit late for Halloween this one. I haven't reviewed all that many Brooks shoes over the past few years, but I spookily named this one the Brooks Ghost 15. I've been taking this daily shoe out for a spin. Here's my thoughts. Welcome back to the channel people, or if it's your first time here, where have you been? Hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when I launch the new videos for you. Also give this video a thumbs up, like it really helps us out, and share it with your running buddies. Taking a look at the Brooks Ghost 15, this is a shoe that Brooks have fired over to me for review. Bet they're not paying me to make this video, nor will they be vetting my views before my valued viewers. So a daily contender this one, mainly for mile munching. Not sure anyone's going to be wearing it for racing, but that's not really its intended use case. I'll probably be pairing this one up in the future videos against things like the Pegasus 39, the Puma Velocity Nitro 2, maybe the Reebok Energy 4, and a couple of models from A6 as well. 323 grams or 11.4 ounces in my UK size 11. I can confirm this one's close to being true to size. I would suggest it runs a little long, so you may want to go down a half size unless you like wearing nice thick winter socks. I'm measuring about 35 millimeters of stack height in the heel and we got about 23 in the forefoot making for a 12 mil drop. I think this one's launched over in the US already. I don't think it's out in Europe yet. I think this one's up for about 140 US dollars. I reckon probably about 130 when it drops here in the UK. Typical reviews always start with the upper first. It's a nice and simple approach from Brooks here, no bells and whistles. Some considerable padding there in the heel, which may be very, very high on your list. A few reflective pieces here and there. Nothing flashy. See what I did there? Certainly a daily running shoe, this one, not some weight relieved model. Don't be expecting some wafer thin tongue or anything. That's not what you're going to get here. So many of those more speed orientated shoes just seem to fall to bits after a while. But I think this one's built pretty much like a tank. Certainly soft and smooth in the upper. I wouldn't really say we're bordering on plush here, but there's certainly a nice amount of padding. Well designed, just seems to hold the heel in place without being overtly present, I suppose. Now the tongue here isn't gusseted or anything like that. There's no sort of crazy tack or anything. Just perfectly formed and great in length too. So you've got enough just around that top area near the ankle so the laces don't bite into the top of your foot. Allows for that runner's knot, which sometimes can lead to a bit of extra lace tension around here by the ankle. Now the toe box mesh and other sections of the upper that go around the lateral and medial side of the shoe are very soft. There's almost like a velvety smooth nature to it. Really is quite comfortable there in the toe box. Really feels like it flexes with your foot. I'd suggest that toe box width and height are ideal. Just some simple eyelet reinforcements there for the laces. You do also have this additional heel counter on the outer section of the shoe. Just provides a little bit more structure there. And you've also got one internally as well as per usual. Does seem to actually cup round the back of the heel quite substantially. All in all, a very comfortable shoe. I'd argue that it's probably a little bit more comfortable than the Pegasus 39 from Nike. Slightly more crafted upper than the Velocity Nitro 2 from Puma. Although we do have quite a bit more weight overall in the shoe when compared up against something like the Energy 4, which is one of the lighter models. Something there for everybody in those four shoes, I think. I think if you're after a slightly more cushioned and comfortable board on plush fit then the ghost 15 might be for you whereas you've got the reebok on the other end of the spectrum where there's much lighter materials being used it's certainly a more conventional running shoe upper than we've seen in a lot of models recently there have been some models recently where the upper almost seems like some sort of afterthought they've just chucked together a load of different materials to see what happens certainly a daily driver and it might be great if you need a shoe that's a touch warmer than some of the others especially during these wet and windy winter months it's also a bit of an eco warrior too brooks reckon that 62.5 percent of the upper is actually made from recycled materials some of which are bottles that they've diverted from going into a landfill site so it's always a good thing in my initial testing of this one over the last couple of weeks, I've got to be honest, there's very little that I dislike about the upper. I mean, if you're running in absolutely dire, very, very wet conditions, it's probably going to soak up some moisture, but every shoe does that. I am reliably informed it also comes in some wide fit sizing too. So just a touch long for me, perhaps, to declare it being true to size. I'm going to give it a 2.8 out of 3 for the upper after my initial runs. Midsole. Midsole.
Mitzel now. So Mitzel wise we've got an updated Brooks foam here. Well they're kind of all updated to me because I've only run in about three shoes. I've used the DNA flash stuff before in the Hyperion Tempo and the Hyperion Elite 2. I really like the Tempo, I wasn't so keen on the Elite 2 at all. This foam here though is somewhat firmer, I wouldn't say it's unforgiving, closer to something like the Adidas Light Strike material that we saw on the SL20, though I'd suggest out of the box this one is a little bit more forgiving. What we have here in the midsole of the Ghost 15 is DNA Loft 2, and if you look at that stripe on the upper section of the midsole, you can see there's quite a considerable drop here. I gotta be honest, I really felt it when first running in the shoe, it does feel like you're elevated a little bit more like you're on a bit of a slope i suppose eddie the eagle style brooks suggests that the dna loft 2 is a balance of rubber air and foam i actually think this one gives us a ride that's probably closer to the adios 6 or 7 from adidas i'm expecting that were you it's actually quite a nice surprise this one it kind of makes me reminisce a little bit about the SL20 original from Adidas. I mean, that shoe was a stonking one for value. A very versatile workhorse of a shoe. One interesting thing about this shoe is the sock liner that's been included. It almost feels sort of like polyurethane in nature, but it isn't. It's made of Biomogo, apparently. I did a bit of research on this. I'd not encountered that before. Apparently, this is a material that will be easily eaten by microbes when you throw it away. But apparently, the nasties that live around your feet won't eat it so you won't have to lose any sleep over that i mean if you're here for a ridiculous compression and squash this isn't the shoe that is going to deliver that for you go and watch another one of my shoe reviews with some sort of overly compressive foam but if you're after a more controlled impact protection and something a little bit more responsive underfoot ghost 15 could be ideal it's just a bit more concise and predictable than some of those other foams that we've come to hate actually i really don't want that all the time i think it's a nicer foam to run in than nike's react stuff that just feels outdated to me and it's too unpredictable as well one shoe may have a certain type of react and another has something completely different react doesn't really mean anything anymore i think this is closer to the puma nitro material that many viewers have been enjoying as i say the 12 mil drop here was actually quite noticeable on foot does goad you to actually want to push the pace a little bit more but i found the actual transition from heel to toe actually really smooth in this shoe very serviceable at steady paces it's certainly not a shoe that i'd probably want to race in or do some higher pace workouts in if you're going to be undertaking blistering pace then you know choose one of those super light shoes this is supposed to be a sort of hard wearing daily model and that's exactly what you get out of the box a smooth midsole feel here and i think that's amplified a little bit by the use of the rubber and these flex grooves in the outsole the foam feels quite durable it doesn't feel like it's going to flake away or tear easily and i found that this one's improving actually mile on mile it's just getting that a little bit softer as i torture it a stable underfoot feel and one that will work really well for some slower longer miles and daily short to mid distance stuff again it's a midsole here without all the bells and whistles you may be after that in case buy something else otherwise i really enjoyed the nice predictable cushion here i'm going to give it a 2.6 out of 3 for the midsole after my initial runs i have reduced that score a little bit because i think that some people may be put off by the 12 mil drop you can feel it just could be a little bit too extreme for some people and it's got a slightly more niche use case it's a little bit more locked into a steady to easy pace running zone outsole now so outsole wise is probably the most striking and surprising element of the shoe it's really really impressive in wet conditions ridiculous grip in what i can only describe as being a slog through some boggy muddy leafy conditions standing water everywhere loads of mud and the ghost 15 was absolutely fantastic you can kind of tell it's gonna be good you like run your hand down it like this and your hand literally sticks to the rubber it is superb those conditions were no match for the outsole on the ghost 15 is it the shaped and groove sections in the mid to forefoot or the coarse nature of the design either way exceptionally good in wet and windy conditions as such this one's going to stay in the rotation for some time over the winter months now i don't mind having some extra rubber here if that rubber actually delivers and it certainly does here it's actually one shoe where i felt really confident running through those types of terrains it just handles any surface beautifully as you can see the rubber is actually pretty thick there on the outsole 
and it's really good to see that considering that some shoes I've tested recently have really been a letdown in the outsole department. I can't see this stuff wearing down anytime soon and there's just so much going on and with very few areas for debris to hide in as well. Easy to clean, you can just get stuff out of it very quickly. You don't need the jeweler's screwdriver here to liberate lots of stones very promising so far from a daily perspective again take a step back and think about what you want from an outsole right now you know the conditions out there are just going to eat up something like the streak fly outsole for example anything that's got really smooth grips just useless out on my typical routes at the moment i'm going to give it a 2.7 out of 3 for the outsole just don't think i need all of the actual rubber that's on display here i could probably lose this section here in the medial side of the shoe value now so this one's coming in a bit hot i think it's gonna be about 130 pounds here in the uk oh sorry earth credits so it's certainly more than nike reebok or puma's models but i think you're actually getting a little bit more shoe here it's got a slight advantage here over some of those models by the actual quality of the shoe the way it's been put together and that superb outsole everything about this one just feels a little bit less thrown together like some thoughts gone into it functionality over the looks Wow, maybe it's factory related, but it has been really hit or miss in some other manufacturers recently. I mean, Nike, probably the worst. So variable. I know people have been seeing that some Jordan 1s are produced in different factories and they look almost completely different in terms of the upper profile and the way the shoe's been put together. You know, between different colorways in a few weeks, this massive difference. The Ghost 15 does feel like a shoe that you perhaps could have purchased in the late 90s or early noughties, but I mean that with love. When you're spending that type of money, you don't want some cheap shoe out of the box. It just feels like a really well put together quality item. There's no like dodgy glue marks or anything here. I've got to be honest, guys, I'm growing a little weary of the daily super shoe trend right now every shoe's being designed like it's some younger cousin or something of the top level super shoes and i just don't want the same foam in every single shoe it's kind of nice running in something that's a little bit more responsive feels like i'm a little bit more attached to the floor and that's coming from someone that loves the prime x you know one of the tallest shoes out there it's a really quite liberating experience to run in a lower stack shoe no fear of slipping here because you're not wearing a stupendous speed slipper so if you want something that's just a little bit more reasonable and conventional the ghost 15 could be right up your street especially over the winter months a value victor here and i think you're going to get some reasonably good durability out of this one too considering that outsole rubber i'm going to give it a 2.7 out of 3 for value after my initial runs if i've totaled the scores up correctly that gives us a 10.8 out of 12 for the ghost 15 after my initial runs Really enjoy trying this shoe out from Brooks. I think you should check it out if you're after a really dependable and well put together daily offering. Will you be picking this one up from Brooks, guys? Let me know down in the comments. Musical interlude time. One of my favorite albums of all time today. It's always around about this period during the year when I like to get this one back out and listen to it once again. And that's the Black Rebel Motorcycle Club from Black Rebel Motorcycle Club. I love the fact that all the tracks in this album seem to sort of mold together, all the outros and intros just blend and produce this wonderfully atmospheric piece. There's some grimy guitars here, they're very abrasive and some really interesting bass tones as well. I think that was from the use of guitar amplification to actually boost the signal of the bass. There's some very woody guitar and bass tones too. I think BRMC used some semi-acoustic models and you can certainly hear that in some of the sounds. The drums are really interesting as well. They sound kind of ramshackle at points. Don't expect some stadium rock sound here. This is quite lo-fi. Absolutely one of their best albums love burns what a great track the repeated vocals of red eyes and tears at the start and the intro and the manic sort of lo-fi punk of whatever happened to my rock and roll it's a good old stomper as well almost in like glam rock fashion i suppose with spread your love an absolute masterpiece this one and if you listen to it on the current Apple Music version, I think it comes in at about 1 hour 25 minutes. An album you can really dip into and get lost in, the Black Rebel Motorcycle Club from Black Rebel Motorcycle Club. I in fact remember buying this album and putting it into my CD Walkman 
um, walking home listening to it in the pouring rain. I think that's why my association with the album is of that weather condition. Thanks for tuning in people, hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you are yet to do so, help us out by hitting that subscribe button. We launch content almost every day. Give this video a thumbs up, like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.